life. Um, you know, I once I once heard your second album, your lead single, "Only You." Yep. Um, was that originally written for Vanessa Williams? Yeah, I wanted her to be my sugar mama, so <laughs> I was gonna write a song for her, and I was gonna. <laughs> Like, like the, the actual song itself, not her feet. Yeah, man, I was trying to bag Vanessa Williams. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> <laughs> I was 17, 18. I thought I could bag Vanessa Williams. And I was like, I'm going to write her this song. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, I know, no, I heard, I heard that really, I heard that she was looking for like a more of a hip hop type of record. And so when she had that record, The Right Stuff, um and, and uh some other records she had but um you know i wanted to make a record where i was the feature so i wrote and produced only you and then put like me on it as a feature and they turned it down so then i was like yo but this record is dope and so um i just turned it into a record for me but but more importantly when i made that record i think the best thing that I've done and the worst thing that I've ever done as an artist was I've cared more about experimenting than actually focusing on landing the single or the project. Like that was never important to me. I was always about the experiment. So for me, Only You, when I was making Only You, radio stations across the country had this thing called the No Rap Workday from 6 a.m to 6 p.m they were not going to play rap they had nope. commercials saying no rap crap no rap work day we want you to have a good day at work we're not going to bombard your ears with anything rap that was a known power move in yep. radio in 1989 1990. so i was like all right cool i'm gonna make a 50% R&B record, 50% hip hop, 100% dance record. And I asked Sylvia because Syl because at that point Atlantic was pushing all rap records with a label on it, it said Atlantic Street. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I took offense to that. It was like some African dancer like logo and it said Atlantic Street well. had a big six sticker on it. And I took, I was, I was offended. I was like, why are you separating us from that? Why are you separating Kwame and MC Light and DOC from the vert? What, what's up with that? Well, you know, you know what? That means when you hand the, 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 the 12 inch to the program director, they're not going to play it because you put that sticker on it. Yo, I'm telling you, I was hot. <laughs> why are you making such a big deal? And and I was able to, you know, me and Sylvia had that rapport, like, yo, I'm telling you, this is not dope. This ain't dope. And they were like, well, well, this is what we're doing. I was like, well, do me a favor. Do not service only you with the sticker. I, I beg you, just don't. For shits and giggles, take the sticker off. See what happens. And at five in the morning, six in the morning, that record was getting played. And that record... That record did great, like yeah. globally, um, um, nationwide, the record did great. And it was like some, I told you, but they still kept, you know, the next records that have the damn sticker on it. But, um, you know, and you know how it is, Ex execs sometimes don't want to be proven wrong. They, you know, they, they have their vision and they want you to respect their vision and I get it. Um, but that sticker was the worst. And then Sylvia left, like dead in the middle of the project. She went into um to East West, which turned into Electra. So so that ally to keep the stickers off <laughs> wasn't there anymore. So we we're like, uh You know, we talk about Sylvia Rome. Can you believe this woman is still actively working at a high level in the music industry? Like we we That we I can believe. You can believe it? That I saw. Yeah. Sylvia was so, and I'm not gonna call her. When 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 I was young, she everybody felt old. Like like yeah. Sylvia was a grown woman when I was young. Like like yeah. most people don't retire in the music industry. They just don't. 
Sylvia has been around for a long freaking time at a yep. very, very high level. Yep, so always. You, you, you said earlier, Sean, I can't call it. I actually, I see everybody the same. Now you're saying, I saw that. What was it about because, Sylvia? Because what Sylvia, it's funny. My, I, had a, I had a godfather who used to go on the road with me, and um, he used to run he used to run um, clubs in New York. And one time I brought him up to Atlantic and Sylvia comes out, she sees my godfather. She's like, hi, Kenny. <laughs> and my godfather's like, hi, Sylvia. I'm like, you know, y'all know each other. Uh, and, and my godfather was like, yo, she used to be the receptionist here. Yep. Yep. For real. He's like, yeah. And I said, she runs the joint. And, and, and he was like, yeah, like he would tell me like, Knowing her, she was an upwardly mobile like thinker. Like she went to business school. She was like she was about her game, and and over the years, even not being at Atlantic and keeping in touch with her, and and just or keeping in touch with um, people that were around, you know, just seeing that seeing that progression, it was a constant progression. So no, at 16, did I say, Oh, you're going to be the president of the world. No, I didn't. I didn't think that. But it's a consistent move. You know, she's made consistent moves. So by the third move, you're like, all right. You know, when you see somebody make consistent moves, and peers fall, as you're making your consistent move and you see the peers fall fall to the wayside or just do other other things, um, you start to you start to understand, especially becoming older and see, having a business mining or 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 just having a business appreciation, um, you start to see it, um, and it goes to show something for the black community, the black music community. We see all of our executives at every state of their executive maneuvers. We run into them. We keep in touch with them. If they're not in a label position, they tend to be in other positions or other facets of this industry where we can still keep in touch in some way, shape or form. But I don't see that with the white, the white industry heads. So there's certain so so back to Sylvia, like if if Clive Davis can stick around, if um um what's my man at Universal that went to Sony? Um why am I drawing a blank? And I'm drawing a blank is right with you. Top dog of all top dogs. We're not, we're not we're not we're not talking currently we're not talking about um Tommy do Matola or we... No 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 I'm talking um up until very recent um what is homeboy's it. name ballhead um I'm head of universal for a long time um I forget it it'll come to me but I see these executives uh, Lucian Grange I see these people uh, Jimmy Iovine moving up and staying up, you know? And I'm like, when I see Sylvia, I'm like, okay, one of us is doing it too. They do it all the time. So it's not going to be a surprise to see one of us do it. Um, and, you know, that's where it is. It just so happens that the one of us that I see doing it is somebody that I personally knew um, that started me out. Um, yeah, but then, you know, I just looked at it like that. I, you know, it was like, why can't you know? Some people will just straight disappear. You don't know, you know, you don't, you don't know where they went. Like, like for example, like a, say a Donny Donny Einer that was at um, um, Sony. When he left Sony, he became a CEO of somewhere else that had nothing to do with music. You know, because. That's what they go to school for. That's what their, you know, their business mind goes. Like, you know, uh, um, um, Bartles um, over that was at um, Bartles. Yeah, at, at at Def Jam. I don't know where he went. You know, I don't know. Um, See, he was a good friend too. Um, yeah, 
Bartles was was I wonder where the hell is he these days? Yeah, like but but um, trust me, they're at another place. Correct. Running something, you know, because right. that's what they do. Um, so why you know I'm 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 like why can't I can't we, you know? Um, and so that definitely brings me to a Sylvia. And you know, there's other people, you know, like a Clarence Avon. And there was, um, you know, just just so many other people that you see just still running things in their own way. And, 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 and um, I appreciate seeing that. I especially appreciate seeing that in our community. It doesn't have to be the particular job we knew them for, but to see them, them still thriving in a certain situation um, is very dope. And I'm really proud to see that Sylvia has been doing it. So am I. So yeah, am I. I was a little kid, you know, I think I, I want to say when I first met Sylvia, to be honest with you, she was probably 35 years old. You know what I'm saying? She was definitely 30 something. I remember her telling me, I'm 30. And I'm like, oh, you old. <laughs> I remember that. Like, I remember. You, you did, anybody, when you're a kid, somebody who even says 30, that, that's yeah. old. I remember her saying like 35 or 38. I remember one of those numbers or both. And me in my mind going like, yo, she's so old, man. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.